Hey YouTube, another video for you today on the Ableton Push 3 controller version. The subject I'm talking about today is very, it's a very quick one. It's just about navigating your clips in the screen view, uh, on the screen, on the session view on the screen, I should say. Now this applies to Push 3 standalone and the controller versions, and I don't believe it will apply to the Push 2 controllers until Push version 12. So maybe if you have a push 2 controller you have to wait until then but as i have a push 3 in the controller version it would apply to that and also standalone okay so i'm going to show you basically two ways it's not really two ways it's just i would say two best practices you should do if you're jamming along and using the screen for navigating your clips or you know playing whatever clips you want or sessions yeah using the screen rather than using the session session view um, on the actual pads yeah and the reason why i want to talk about that today is because you get a lot more information if you're not looking at the computer screen yeah you get a lot more information about your clips when you're actually using the screen and it's a really welcome uh, workflow that Ableton have introduced on this new device and i think it's really good because having that option of navigating more clearly on this screen should have been implemented many years ago i think okay so basically i'll get to the tip i'll start off with what you shouldn't do and i'll move on to the next level of what you shouldn't do and then i get to the final tip okay so if i've just got some demo as i normally do have some demo loading up to explain to you what i'm talking about okay so i have my eight tracks here and let's go to the next lot i've got nine tracks all together and if you look carefully at them, you'll see that there's something that's not really going to help me if I wanted to jam along with the things, with the elements that I've recorded. Now, it's only, you know, a couple of scenes. There's not really much going on, but that's not the point. It's not about the content. It's about what's wrong with these clips. So, you know, just give you a few seconds and what do you think is actually wrong with them? If I had a whole load of them here, what do you think would is wrong and obviously is that the clips are blank yeah so that's not really good if i wanted to know what was actually on this track i know what the track name is on each one of them yeah but in terms of what i actually recorded not really helpful okay so that's what you shouldn't do this is the first one i think you should not do that Okay, let's move on to the next level. I'm just going to load another, load another demo so we can get a little bit closer to what I'm talking about. Let's not save that. Okay, right. So this is the next level of what you shouldn't really do when you're recording clips and you want to navigate through them on your screen. You can see this one, if you zoom in a little bit closer, you can see this one is a little bit better but it's still not ideal. And why this one is a little bit better? Well, at least the clips here are named according to the track, the track names. So this one, this track number three, I called it Nord Drum because on this third channel, I've got a drum rack that I'm controlling externally or playing the sounds externally through my Nord Drum 3P drum synthesizer, okay? So that's why I named that track that. And on this next track, it's just the name of the, another drum rack. I've also got another drum rack. This is controlling my Behringer Crave. I'm controlling that MIDI through MIDI, through my external synth. This track number seven is a, a, an internal plugin and so on and so forth. Basically, if you look closely, you can see that my clips are named after the track names. Little bit of a better step, but still, it's, how is that going to help me navigating a whole page or pages full of scenes with all different clips in them? How do I know what's what? Okay, so this one is a bit better, but I still would say I don't advise you to save your sets or your sessions or your creations in this way. So I'm just going to load another one, another demo that, and this is the way I advise you to save your work going forward. Okay, so let's get that loaded up now. So here we are. Right. So I want you to imagine 
uh, as I was saying before, you have a load of clips recorded in London. And these are just demos, so they've got very basic content within them. But imagine you've got a load of uh, clips and you're now either playing live or you're trying to record using the push live, not looking at your screen, and you're recording into the arrangement view on your software. How do you know what's what? Well, see, if you look on this track, it's a little bit easier for me now. Obviously, I've got no content on these blank tracks. But on this one, I can see on this track here, the fourth one, I know I've got just the bass drum, okay? And on the next one, because what you normally do in the session view is if you have your drums, you normally progressively add more uh, drum elements, rhythmic or percussive elements to, to fill out that particular track. OK, so I know on this one, I've got like a bass drum and I'm just abbreviating the sounds as I had add more content. So I've got bass drum, a click kind of a clack kind of sound, a tom and a snare. OK, and on this track with another drum rack on it, I've got hats, I've got hats and three snare sounds. And so it gives you a lot, a lot more information as to what to jump to, because I don't think it's just probably me, but I don't think many people actually at the beginning anyway don't necessarily arrange everything perfectly so each scene has the perfect clips for the sounds they want to trigger and they just trigger the scene i think you probably jump around playing different clips from different areas and you just kind of blend them together and see what works and this is basically much better to name your clips so you know what's within them it just helps you with navigating with playing live either or either just messing around or going to record into the arrangement view and if you've got pages and pages of tracks that you're navigating through it really helps you know because you and you don't necessarily even if you have everything aligned perfectly in the scene you don't necessarily need to stick to that when you're playing live or you're recording you can jump and say oh i'm not going to play those two i'm actually going to play this uh yellow one highlighted here but i'm just going to go across and trigger this one you know, these hats instead of the hats and snares. So you know in advance what content you've got in your clips. So when you record your stuff, you don't need to do it straight away, but I would advise you to get into the mindset of making sure you go into each clip. And it's probably quicker to do it on the computer. Yeah, dragging the clips around, renaming them, or probably quicker. You can do it from the hardware, but I find it's just a lot easier to do it on the software and um yeah so for this particular sound this is a sample um you know i'm you don't need to you you don't necessarily need to call it the name of the sound but you can actually call it what it's doing like for me this is my main groove and i've got the main groove but i doubled it in length this is my bass line and so on and so forth yeah so my tip is just to uh, just again to recap whenever you're recording anything in your push and you're using the screen to navigate rename your clips to the content or what it what is in there so you have a good idea of what you're going to be playing when you're triggering it especially in a live and a recording situation okay so that's it for today thanks for watching see you in the next one